Hello, my name is Norman. I'm a volunteer tour guide at Lorston Castle in North West Edinburgh. In this brief recording, I'll try to describe how the current building came into being, developing as it did over some 280 years between 1590 and 1870. A very brief background first. The estate is first mentioned in the Exchequer Roll of 1290, which was produced following the death of Margaret, Maid of Norway, who was technically Queen of Scotland for four years, though she never actually left Norway and was never crowned. At this time, the estate or policy was listed as belonging to the crown. In 1330, the estate was gifted by charter to one John Tennant. Between that date and 1926, some 30 different families have owned Lauriston and the original size of the estate has fluctuated significantly, mostly downwards over that same period. We do know that a tower house existed on the estate in 1544. This was at the time of the rough wooing, when Henry VIII took exception to Scotland, refusing to sanction a future marriage between Mary Queen of Scots, aged two at the time, and his son Edward, aged seven. The Earl of Hertford led troops north, where they sacked the abbey at Holyrood, and then proceeded to Crammond to raise the tower house at Lauriston. The only part of that house remaining today is the well in the courtyard. Moving on to the building itself as we see it here. In 1590 the estate was owned by an Archibald Nape of Merkiston and he commissioned the building of a tower house as delineated in the maroon rectangle. L-shaped and very much typical of late 16th century country house architecture. Very little changes until the early 19th century when the estate is owned by a Thomas Allen, newspaper proprietor and a mineralogist. His requirement was for a fashionable country retreat in the style of a small French chateau. To this end, he commissioned the prominent architect of his day, William Byrne, to oversee the work. Byrne's original idea involved pulling down Napier's house and starting with a blank canvas. Fortunately, one of his good friends was able to convince him that this would be a tragedy. His friend, a certain Sir Walter Scott, won the day and William Byrne incorporated his design around the original building and mirrored one or two of the original design features, such as the turret window rooms at the corner of the building. See the amber rectangle on the drawing. The next owner to have a significant impact was Andrew Lord Rutherford, an advocate and MP for Leith. He commissioned another famous name from Scottish architecture, a William Playfair. Several internal modifications were made, as well as the addition of gabled porches to the west and south of the house. The porch at the main entrance holds the Rutherford Crest, number three on the image, a mermaid with a mirror in hand and the motto, by sea and land. Possibly Playfair's main impact with assistance from the Horticultural Society was the landscaping of the grounds, planting some 400 trees, reducing the depth of the pond for safety, and enclosing the grounds on two sides with the perimeter wall. Playfair's porch is highlighted in pink. The final addition to the rear of the house, marked in green, made by Thomas McKnight Crawford, who bought the estate in 1871. It was he who commissioned the addition of a second story extension above the kitchens and servants quarters. The library. McKnight Crawford sold the property to the last owners, the Reeds, who made small modifications to the building, but their main contribution, obviously, is the splendid Edwardian interior, housing several important collections. However, of note are the two items highlighted, thought to have been relocated during the Reed's ownership. Number one is the so-called Celestial Stone, a gift from John Napier to his brother Alexander, and it represents the celestial bodies as they appeared in the sky at the time of his birth. At two, the anagram stone, created for Robert Dalgleish and his wife Jane Douglas of Pumferston. They were both devout people and used their names to produce the message, God is great and he is all our bliss. Unfortunately, one S short of a full spelling of bliss. So that, briefly, is the history of the physical building you can see today. The interior, of course, is another tale.
for another day. Thank you.